Alright, let's begin. Uh, hello everyone and welcome to the stream. We got an exciting stream tonight. We got a nice unboxing going on here. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out my camera setup for these unboxings, so uh, just, um, I'm just trying my best here. Uh, yeah, sorry about the lateness and talking into the void while I'm dealing with laptop issues. So I got it. I mean, how did it get? Anyway, so as you can see, it wasn't just the big old box I had. I've been collecting uh, PC Engine stuff for a bit. And in here should be, spoiler alert, should be one PC Engine. And excuse my room, we're going to be using this thing in a bit to test said PC Engine. Alright. Alright. So some of the stuff I've collected, uh, I found these F1 Circus games. Uh, I think these are like RC Pro-Am style. And I mean, I guess, not too impressive, but for clean condition PC Engine games, I got both of these for like 15 bucks free shipping. So you can't pass stuff like that up. Uh, here's some of the other ones I've gotten. Uh, these are games I got and I made cases for. So I won't be able to play the Turbo Graphics game because I don't have the uh, region. The PC Engine in here is not reach a free mod. And we got some stuff too, like a modern controller, um, whatever this nonsense it is, it is to get AV out of the PC Engine because I was originally just RF. And a nice big triad power supply and pigtail connector. So now with that out of the way, we can get to the main package here. Now, I'm excited for this. I don't know how they packed it and whatnot. I know what I'm getting. But let me tell you, it is an utter trap. The moment you find out how to order things from Japan, because you could easily fall in a hole just buying a lot of stuff. But the thing is, you kind of have to buy a lot of it because um, that's how you get shipping. Because if you buy like a cheap Famicom game, you're still going to be paying $30, $40 for shipping on that thing alone. So the way you got to do is you got to you got to buy a bunch, and then have it shipped in one package so you could just cut it down. Like I bought, in here has like uh, 15 orders and if individually those were shipped, those would be 30 to 40 dollars shipping each, but I got this down to like eight and a, eight and a quarter dollars for each, uh, for each item. So that's, that's primo. That's, that's good beans. Cool beans even. So, let's see what we got here. Alright, what's, what's this bundle here first? Uh, we'll see. Can't tell, I, I thought it kind of looked like Saturn. Yeah, I, I didn't find it hard, I just found it like, oh, but what if I spend only 10 more dollars on something else? And that literally kept happening. Especially since some of the games I was just afraid of that would just, if I don't get them now, 
they gotta start going up in price. All right, so right off the bat here, we got a Super Game Boy. Which, it is a bit dirty, but we could clean it and it should still absolutely work. And how are you doing, by the way? Thank you for coming. Um, but the best thing about this, though, is that I could get this run in on the stock uh, Super Nintendo by clipping off a few tabs in the uh, cartridge bay. And even though this is a Japanese version, all Game Boy games are region free. So I could put a US game into the Japanese converter, put the Japanese converter in my US console. So that's going to be fun testing out. I kind of feel like I should I kicked myself a bit, I should have got like the uh, Super Game Boy 2. But, uh, I, I can get that sometime later. Give me a nice little trash bag here. Alright, what else is in this? Oh, there's definitely, ooh! There's, there's definitely something here. Yeah! It was the same thing with um, with N64 too, it was just like use of tabs. It is, it's still both uh, NTSC across uh, US to Japan. PAL's, the PAL region is the only weird one. Alright, so here, here's a game series I, I absolutely love. I had to get the uh, signed versions for my collection. We got Luna 1 and Luna 2 Eternal Blue on Sega Saturn. These never came out in the States. We only got the PlayStation version. It's called Complete. But I can't begin to describe how much I love these games. Still to this day, they're some of my favorites. And I am going for a complete collection. Eventually. I don't know how, how I'm going to get there. Because Walking School on... Um... Game Gear is probably going to be intense to find. But look at that, this is clean. Does this come with like the cool stuff the English version came with? Oh yeah, there's, there's a map of some sort. Um, <laughs> the uh, desk rat rumor. Um, all CDs are come to that. Um, game CDs are made to a higher quality standard, so they won't rot as much, or then it's nowhere near as bad as what like normal audio CDs or like rewritables that you could just purchase are. There, it was. It became a big meme in the Santa community, though. So, it's not as cool as a cloth map in the, in the US release, but this is still cool. It's also kind of bizarre saying that the US got the better release. But hey, this is somewhat of a strategy guide, I'm sure of it. Yeah, it's some sometimes we in the US get get the better bargain. Um, one thing I found out recently too in that regard is that uh, N64 cut carts to Japan were always great. While uh, we got all the cool colors, uh, we got like Gold Zelda, Black Killer Instinct, like Blue Tony Hawk. So we got the first one. With the, uh, with the spine card. So this is collector's value, I guess. So there's nothing better than a simple, solid 
high fantasy story like Lunar. So we're going to be playing the, uh, the original Lunar Sa uh, Sega CD version somewhat soon. If this is still mostly good condition, there's a small scratch there, but for the price I got these at, it's insane. Alright, what's next in the box? Oh, just packing material. Okay. I can go right back in. Oh, here it is. Uh, no. At one point, yes. Uh, but not anymore. The... I do own the English Sega CD versions, though. I, I very fortunately bought those before the inflation. I'm very inelegantly trying to open these. But screw it. Alright, so this is the PC engine. Any NEC's sort of fake 16-bit console that they released in the 80s. Uh, no one has the topographic 16 here in the States. And this is also going to need to get cleaned and restored, but it should still work as well. This is one of the main consoles I've been missing. Uh, just because of how, how inaccessible it was. Um, because the U.S. Turbo Graphics is hella expensive and American sellers I learned love to upcharge anything from Japan. And I don't mean just adding like money to recoup from uh, shipping, but it's just like they, they just lo they love to upcharge it as well. So, yeah, this is um, it's how small the console was. This was one of the big selling points too. Is more powerful than both the Master System and the NES, and so so much smaller too. And this was the first console that would add uh, get add-ons like CD drives, RAM cards, all that junk. But I just wanted a base PC engine so I could test out games I've been collecting. And we also got the controller too, which again, this is going to need some cleaning, some retro brightening. I'm going to have to figure that out. And that's why I got all those cables and stuff from earlier. We're going to figure that out at the end of the stream. Okay, we got two more uh, bundles here to check out. Not sure if any order, if there was any order. Yeah, there, there is a bit of discolorization, but it's not pure yellow in yet, just yet. So, it's not, it doesn't feel brittle. And I've had an, a, a Super Nintendo that's just was yellowed and was brittle. Alright, so this, this is, I, I went a bit ham on the uh, Nintendo stuff just because it's how, how expensive this stuff is here in the States. Or the US version. Yeah. So we got Metal Gear on Famicom. Sergeant Saunders Combat, which is a very interesting game. I'll get to that in a second. We got Super Metroid. This was like 20, 25 bucks for this when, and you know, you don't need to know Japanese to play this game. And the US version loose cuts like 80. Yep. Um, I, I would be absolutely lost playing this in Japanese, <laughs> but still. Um, then we got F Zero, which I might need to know some Japanese to play, but should still be a fairly easy game to play. And um, again, another expensive one on the US for the US version. Now, Sergeant Saunders Combat. Um, we never got this in the States. So this, this one's interesting because Combat is a US World War II show from the 60s that gained a cult following in Japan. 
they made this game, and it's a uh, strategy, tactical strategy game that was like realistic, um, just like the show was, and it was meant to come out in the U.S. But Activision failed somehow. They had the rights. They made a prototype. Some asshole owns the prototype. And, like, I, I haven't seen it dumped. So if you, you sound like you might have it dumped. I'm not sure that you have a, have a fan translation or something. But from what I've heard on, read on Lost Media is that, that, uh, that cartridge was just friggin', yeah, yeah, he won't dump it. As like the official translation and whatnot too. It's like, come on. Which, by the way, this is an absolute excellent show if you like World War II stuff. Um, it, it was like, it would be, it would take until like the Band, Band of Brothers to be topped. Yeah, it's like, come on, like, I understand keeping it, but put the ROM out, dump the ROM. Let others enjoy it. I want to see what it is. All right, so here, here's the last big thing. This is a nice big stack of uh, jewel cases. It so wouldn't lose like all that value. It would still be valuable. But uh, I mean, yeah, but still though. Like I get what you're saying, but it, it, it's he still owns the physical thing. Even though there's like, there's, how should I put this? Um, even like rare games that are still dumped, the real copies are still hella up there. So I mean, I, I guess the rare just owning the only one in this in the world is what he's probably worried about. But I don't know, man. It's still lame. All right. So we already see a Saturn game here. This is the first Dead or Alive on Saturn. We're, we're doing jiggle physics here. Oof. I'll have to look into that one. I haven't heard, heard of it, but yeah, that, that's lame. I still got a price tag on it. <laughs> then we got... Dead or Alive 2 on Dreamcast, which in, for me to play this I have to make a boot disc. But it's nice to get an... Uh, Another Dreamcast game. For some reason, this case feels heavier. Like maybe a different type of plastic? Oh, California Raisins. Okay, yeah. Um, I know the franchise, I never knew it had a game. <laughs> Actually, yeah, the manual does seem kind of thick. Probably as thick as the the two main stars here. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I, I didn't. I wouldn't think that California raisins would be on Super Famicom. That that that's definitely like an '80s thing. All right, we got our first uh, piece of engine game. A shooter known as Paranoia, uh, released in this state as Psychosis. But I want to take a look at this cover art here because 
The game is friggin' nuts. And just look at that. I would have that on my wall. Like if they ever made like a vinyl and a vinyl soundtrack of this game and this had this artwork on it, I would just pop it up there. Oh, so you know this one. Yeah, it's on, it was on the uh, PC Engine Mini. I, I, I love the shit out of that game. All right, and then we got another Lunai. This is uh, the Japanese version, Mega CD version of Lunar, the first one. Which I have the English one, but it's nice, to, again, I just want Japanese ones for collections too. All right. I'm not sure if I could play this on the... Yeah, you, you saw what's coming up next. <laughs> Not sure if I could play this on the uh, US Sega CD without mods, but I'll look into that. And yep, uh, Sonic Jam. This is a very expensive game <laughs> in both uh, US and PAL region, so Japanese is really the only way to go here. And even then, I still paid like a decent price just to try to fight for this on uh, Bayou. Wait, what? Oh no! No, 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 what's Christmas Nights doing in here? Yo, what the hell? Yo, I'm about to complain. What the shit? Did no one at all check? I mean, worst comes to worst, I'm only out like 25 bucks, but 25, 30 bucks for it, but still. That's lame. Alright, well, I'll, I'll figure that out. Alright, next is the, uh, honestly, yeah, Christmas Nights is not bad, though. So, when I first started to use Bayi, I had no idea how it worked. Um, so I just went to, like, the end in Sunis and picked out this game because it had a cool cover art. It's called, um, I have this in the ticket right now, um, some long Japanese name, uh, something something Necromancer, yeah, and it's obviously like HR Giga inspired, uh, cover art here, uh, but it's an RPG, so it's gonna be good luck for me trying to even play this. But then we got another Sonic here, the other uh, Saturn Sonic. It's, I have it on the ticker, that's the game I, I selected that we're playing. Uh, Joss, or yeah, uh, Joss A. Ken Necromancer. I'm, I'm butchering the pronunciation. But here's Sonic R, an F1 racing game turned into a Sonic racer. So again, another game insanely priced here in the uh, States and PAL, so Japan's the way to go. From what I heard, it's still like a decent game though. Maybe, maybe it's not the best one, but it's there. And here's a game I'd absolutely be lost trying to play. Um, it's also a real shame, I don't know, it uh, it's a real shame that this one never came out in the States. Um, this is called Wackenroder. It is a steampunk, uh, tactical RPG 
based on the Shining Force 3 engine. And the game is made by a dream team of uh, Serial Experiment, Experiments Lane and Last Exile people. Uh, no, not yet. Uh, Sonic R is the uh, first time I'm owning it, so we'll give it a shot sometime soon. And, um, yeah, there's the Lane and Last Exile people, which, by the way, I love Last Exile. Um, music is also done by, I want to say, I'm forgetting the name, but there was a, uh, one of the big prog rock bands. Uh, put their efforts into this game as well, so it looked good, very cool, and can't wait to actually, you know, wait for the U.S. translation of this to come out, or the fan translations. Alright, so that's it. Um, yeah, I want to say, uh, I want to say yes, but I feel that's kind of a lazy way, lazy uh, way to think because there's more prog rock than just yes. But for now, we're gonna get into hooking up this bad boy and get it running. Now the cool thing about the PC Engine too is that these things are really robust. There's, um, the base versions don't have any, like, leaky caps or anything. So I could, theoretically, this should just plug in and play. So we got the Hyperkin reproduction controller here with the dovetail adapter for PC Engine. But we're going to stick with the uh, original controller now. For now, but it's nice to have a new, fresh controller in case if this one gets wonky or I need to clean it. Then um, we have a US or just a really high quality power supply that's made specifically for. Uh, I think it's made for a lot of things, but it definitely works with the PC Engine. I had to get this off of Castlevania games. But it would, does require the pigtail adapter here. Now the most interesting thing uh, about the PC Engine, which I think is one of the most lackluster things, is it natively only outputs RF. But with the expansion port, you could get add-ons and boosters, so you could get um, AV out. So that's why I had to get all this other uh, stuff from Hyperkin, just so you could try to get this working on at least a CRT. And they did do something smart though, is that they, uh, even though it's two parts like this, what they did is that if you want straight HDMI out, this adapter, um, the HDMI adapter goes into this. So you could just buy one and buy whatever conver uh, other converter you like. The HDMI adapters are typically not good, so that's why I avoid. So this should go right in. Any specific direction this should go in. I assume that's the top. And from the reviews I read, it's that this is a really tight fit. Alright, it's it. 
Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, the NES can do uh, AV, even if it's just mono. The Master System can do full RGB. <laughs> like, you have 16 bits of color. We just can't see them because you have to use RF. And then this pops in there, and then we got the AV there. So let's move this off to the side, let's move some of these games off to the side. Wheel out the CRT here. Plug the power cord in. Yellow, white, red. Uh, hmm. I thought I hit the top button. Oh, there we go. Right, the DVD did boot up. Alright, I'll move the camera in a second. Oh, yeah, the ammo on the cord points up for a reason. Right, what are we going to play first here? There's Paranoia. F1 Circus. Where's Dino Force? Alright, so this is going to be a bit weird how I'm going to be doing this. Here's the thing. Um, they should have. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if NEC just made a bad decision there.
So, unfortunately, because Elgato sucks, um, this is how we're gonna have to play <laughs> on a CRT. Um, because if I try to uh, change the source in the middle of the stream, it, it just won't happen, so I'd actually have to kill the stream. So, let's first just try uh, Paranoia. Oh, the guy didn't even put it in the... Oh no, he gave it a nice a different sleep here. And who's that bald man in the TV there? It's... The crazy thing is, is that... It's so reliable. I've went through many different capture cards, and yet, I have still remained using this old, old, like 2016 uh, Elgato HD something. I don't think it's an HD 16. I think it's just HD. And it just works. Alright, so, uh, pop it this in. Oh, no. Oh, we gotta push that in. Okay, there it is. Got a nice, nice white screen here. Mm, I feel like something should have happened by now. There we go. Oh, you're, you're not getting a good quality of this, huh? Yeah, cap capturing CRT footage is, is not easy. Actually, let's see if I can at least turn off the lights. I think it's a bit better. Yeah, I mean, it's only AV I'm getting out of this and not uh, like RGB or anything, so. Fuck. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to try to do a full run of this game just now. I'm going to taste test. Oh, that guy just doesn't want to die. Yeah, but this controller is still working perfectly fine. Oh, uh, we got this, uh, this thing. You know, I wonder if the instruction manual actually says what, what these things are, because they, they just like no description for them. Like they're just a thing. Plus the music is amazing. Love the FM set. That's supposed to be like an apple?
And my, my love for weird shit peaks up with this game. It, it's so good. Yeah, definitely not a Kirby boss. I was thinking, uh, no, then you got this mind goblin here. <laughs> um, I was thinking, uh, Kirby, because Kirby has that, like, I cloud boss, too. But you're right, I never actually played Terraria. Shh. So we put that back. Um, uh, guess we'll try out, uh, Jossic, uh, Sikhan, Sikhan, ne whatever, Necromancer. Oh, oh, it, it's talking to me. Wait, that is some English? Oh, I can't fit my whole name in it, but I'll, I'll, I'll take Aluk. One of these buttons is probably to like continue. There we go. I, I know this scene too well. Yeah. <laughs> Mind goblins. Alright, so yeah, this is like an old school RPG affair. You actually have to press a button to go into the menu to talk. Right out of freaking uh, the old Ultima games. So, we're not getting far in here. I want to see if I can go outside the town and maybe fight a monster, but I don't think that's going to happen. No, at least the water effect's pretty. You know, like every other game, you have to go and talk to the king first. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Oh, there's a lot of text. Oh, those are people just walking. I thought it sounded like, I don't know, some contraption. They might be giving me hints or something, I, I would assume. Uh, I'll talk to the purple hair person and then we'll leave. Alright, well, maybe this black hair person can tell me something. Stats. I figured that one out.
Oh, I can't leave? Do I have to speak to everybody? That makes sense. And at least the numbers are in... I don't want to say English, but like Romaji, I guess. So you could... I, I could understand them at those at least. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Oh, okay, so those were the party selection. selection. Yes, that's like FF1 where you s select your party at the very start of the game. Uh, I should probably go and equip, but I don't... Stanky music for this. Alright, here we go. I just want to see a battle. Got a couple owl things. I'm guessing that's attack. <laughs> yeah, it kind of do be like Pokemon. So you, this is one of the games where you can't actually select the uh, enemy you're attacking. So I know I'm dealing like ass damage right now because I didn't equip anybody. Oh yeah, love, love when the entire screen flashes red. Uh, maybe that's heal? Okay, that, that's heal. The, the third party member is a healer. Oh shit, that was blood effects, huh? Do that again. Yeah, blood squirts in sixteen bit. too deep into this one <laughs> especially so that goes away we did paranoia let's try these F1 circus games so this is F1 circus just F1 circus Another game with, like, some English here. Alright, I'm F1 driver. This is my first year. Are these actual, like, 
brands or teams. So it's Onyx. Because it sounds cool. Yeah, it would make sense. Trying, trying to get licensed for that stuff. But then again, I wouldn't be surprised because I have no idea about these games. Um, free run, I guess. Oh, it says sus. Oh, I guess I'm on automatic, huh? Yeah, this is like F1 or well, RC Pro Am. Except not the entire map is on one screen. And there doesn't seem to be music either. Ah. I know I should probably be breaking, but um, no way. No breaking might be good here. Yeah. Oh, my, like, one button is, like, kind of sticky, or two buttons kind of sticky. Surprised I'm now just realizing that. All right, now we got some music. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm sure Yoshimoto, I don't know who this Yoshimoto is, but he, he probably played this very same cut of, uh, us, of uh, F1. Uh, I, I, I guess this is just continuous. And he, and he just played it so much, this, the two button is it, stuck. Or it's sticking. Yeah, see, same here. Ho, 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 hope he's doing fine. Alright, so this is F1 Circus 91. Wonder what year this came out. Again, English is being sprinkled. Oh, we got good music now. Good. Free attack. Uh, Scudelia Italia, uh, Yodan Grand Prix, Foot, whoa, okay, <laughs> Foot Volk, Aloes, 
but then the text is foot walk. It's all kind of folks. Yeah, it, 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 they put music in it, it's good. Uh, load it. Oh, that's supposed to be like uh, the car company Lotus. Blob ham. Yeah. And it's also interesting too because like some of these sprites of, of the team like flags I guess don't match up because here it here it's Minabi but there's no R on the flag, it's Minabi. Uh La Luz, Laura Leighton House Oh Brit. They 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 probably put beans in their car. Uh, Better Tim Formula One. Tyler with two L's and two R's, yes. That's supposed to be Williams. I mean, I, I get the LR thing. I'm gonna go with the with this Italian. Is I'm sure I I Italy knows its cars. controls differently, but this essentially is kind of the same game. We got some music though. A map would be very nice. do this. Uh, I'm not even using the brake, so that's that's kind of on me. But what I found about a lot of these old racing games, you just kind of have to like play the course till you learn it. But it definitely feels better than like the RC Pro-Ham on, on the uh, NES. Hated that style of racing. Yeah, I got a manual right here. Yep, stuck in the thing. Not sure if you can see it. <laughs> some of it's col in color, some of it isn't. But yeah, not really showing the map layout. But it says Seuss. It's kind of sad that they didn't have like better music for during the actual racing. Yeah, I could deal with like no music on the menus, but you you need music on the main in the main game. Okay, so uh, those are the F1 Circus games. Um, I know this is gonna fail, but I wanna try it. Uh, where did I put those? There it is. I'm gonna try a Turbo Graphics game in this. It's probably not gonna work, but fuck it. Yeah. 
Yeah, just white screen. Okay. Yeah, how uh, PC Engine uh, and Turbo Graphics did region lock in is they literally just took the um, the pin layout and reversed it for the US. So, in order to uh, common one of the common region mod uh, that mods that you could do is there's literally a, a converter that sticks out of the uh, of the PC engine or the topo graphics and then flips it. All right, so last thing I'm gonna want to try is gotta bust this whole thing open again is Dino Force. Which kind of sparked the whole PC Engine thing to begin with is because I spent $300 on this collector's edition and I would like a way to officially play it. Which one of these is the U card? I know that's the metal U card. That's that's not gonna run. Yeah, um, it was an issue um, back in the day, uh, more or less because of like TV signals and power outlets. Uh, but as gaming moved on, it stopped being an issue. And it was kind of just like, well, we just don't want people importing uh, Japanese games. You know, because we, well, the U.S. wants to make money. Which is also kind of silly because it all goes to the same big company in Japan. So I'm going to do uh, try Dino Force on the Hyperkin controller here. This was a smart move to buy because that B button or the 2 button is kind of sticky. Hopefully he wasn't using that controller when he was playing some uh, PC-98 games. Yeah. Here we go, Dino Force on CRT. So this one has an interesting um, mechanic, is that this rainbow beam, that's actually a damage meter. Uh, for when uh, enemies get close to you, the more damage the beam does. There's probably a few other mechanics of the same I still don't understand, even though I have the manual for it.
Oh shit. I got the speed selection here. Ah, you change weapons. Oh shit! Oh, that's a hell of a loop. Oh wow. Okay. Hey, wait, where's the instruction manual? It was some alien thing. You you have to get into the center of it, but you know when you respawn, you kind of drop there, and didn't seem to have a chance to control it. Oh, that's right, I hold down one to change weapons. Fuck. And do you think I used to play Toho? And one CC a lot of them. Alright, we got a bit of homing. Oh yeah, I should update the ticker. Uh, edit stream info. Dino Force. There we go. Made the warning noise, and yet I didn't do a damn thing about it. Alright, it's the homing laser again. Get down to the middle here. Oh, that was dumb. Seems smart. Eat it.
and jamming. We got the rectangle beam. Say what? Yeah. But I appreciate it being different because there was a there's a lot of shooters on the PC engine that are kind of just samey. This is the one I struggled with when I first played it. Alright, I have one. This is more? Ah, it's lame! Another two, huh? Alright, one's down, another one's down. Okay, just six. Oh, this is colorful. Not sure what this ghost ship does. Yeah, it's weird figuring out which object is shootable, which is not. Whoa! So they're coming. Oh, I got a snake fellow. Ah, oh, crap. Hey, that's it. Alright, all the way back from the start. I'll do one more run, for, run of this. This is fun.
<laughs> yeah, losing a life on the first stage. Good. Oh, we got the stink thing again. I don't know what exactly he does. Oof. Oh, you're a different enemy. So this game does actually have a bit of branch and uh, paths. Not entirely sure how that works. So I don't have much commentary in a game like this. Oh yeah, <laughs> pacifist route would not happen in this sort of game. You would have to at least kill the boss. I'm sure you could make it to them without killing. Oh. Fuck. All right, it's those like weird blocks that trigger Uh, those ambushes. Oh, almost just lost my one life I have here. Oh, there it is. Oh, shit. Alright, one more run. Right, let's not lose life on first stage.
Oh, does the game actually like speed up if I move to the other end of the screen? Yeah, it, it does. Probably not safe. Seeing a speed run of this must be nuts. Not today, assholes. By going to the edge of the screen, it makes the game go faster, like you're moving through... I'll try it on the next stage. But yeah, the game speeds up if you're at the edge of the screen like this. Which is not something I've seen in shooters. Had a weird weapon there. Oh, here's that ghost thing again, which I have no idea what what it do. As soon as I hit this, they're going to come from behind. Yeah. These guys kind of suck. Oh, shit. Sure. You look at chat one second and then you die. That was my fault there. Okay, so the snake thing eats up bullets for me. That is a very nice snake. Alright, that's four.
That's five. Here's the last one. That's it. All right, stage three. myself there. Ah, I was hoping my option would kill it. Oh, okay. <laughs> To this game once I could uh, properly capture uh, PC Engine. But for now, let's uh, wrap things up, go through the games again. Oh, see my messy room there. Let's move my. Uh, nah, I can move it there later. Raise that up a bit. Alright, so Dino Force is cool. I, I need to like sit down and really play through it. Yes, really annoyed about that Sonic Jam thing. <laughs> yep, I could. Uh, the, the Saturn's here. I could hook up the Saturn, but uh, that would also be another thing where I have to like kill the stream just to just to play it. Uh. All right, so yeah, we got the PC Hundred. Yeah. Still absolutely friggin' works after all these years. No bad caps, nothing. Just plug it in with the US power supply and it's good to go. I'm not sure where this came from. So that's awesome. Play me some PC Engine. Or as the Japanese pronounced it, uh, PC. I think at this point, for me, the only consoles I don't have are all those uh, fringe consoles like the uh, CDO and the 3DI and the Jaguar. So we got uh, something, something necromancy. I'm gonna not even try. Uh, we got paranoia. Then for Saturn we got Vakken Loader. We got Sonic R. We got Jiggle Physics, the game. <laughs> we got Christmas Nights. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna complain. <laughs> then we also got Lunar 1 and 2 completes. And we got my first Mega CD game, Lunar 1, and then Jiggle Physics 2, the game. Yeah, is it really the instruction manual? Yeah, I heard it was super short. So it seems like this has a f like half the book is just like all the characters in the move list. So which is nice.
But yeah, I want I want to test something because because I have this nearby. Ugh. More call it morbid curiosity, but I got my uh, postal scale here. So let's take a normal CD game like Moon out here. No, you don't. So this is like four ounces, four point one ounces, and Dead or Alive is Dead or Alive Two is one point one more ounces. Not sure how I could really feel that difference, huh? And another normal game, four point one, yeah. Normal. Yeah, this, this money shot's gonna be kind of big. <laughs> yeah. Um, the stream does seem a bit delayed, but yeah, I have a postal scale I use for my shop, so... And just shipping things in general. Uh, things are simply just not in frame. And then on uh, the yeah that those are not gonna be in frame but it's Metal Gear Super Game Boy Super Metroid Sergeant Sardis Combat and F Zero. So there you have it. Yeah, this was a really cool unboxing. I'm gonna. It's still everything still costs like a pretty penny when when you add everything together and shipping was still kind of up there altogether. But it was still an amazing value. I'm gonna have to do this sometime later this year um, for more Saturn and more uh, Mega CD stuff and maybe more Famicom once I get a once I get or make a converter so I can play. Metal Gear! Yeah, um... I, I had to. It, it's nice, real nice owning a physical copy of this when like... The, the Super Nintendo version is way up there in price. Uh, for, that, that goes for a lot of things too. A lot of the Mega Man games in the States are just really up there, but if you get the, uh, the Japanese versions, they're real cheap. And the only thing you need to do for region locking or region free in the Super Nintendo is chop off like a couple pins. Um, no, the top loader is still going to need a converter. Because there are, there's a pin difference. Yeah, let me grab one of my NES games. Yeah, roll the CRT out of the way. Yeah, so here's my other Famicom game. Uh, Valkyrie, you know, Boken, or Adventure of Valkyrie. Namco's right into it. But, as you can see, uh, up top is Metal Gear and I got Simon's Quest. There is an absolute pen difference here. I mean, maybe the top loader has some unique feature. But the carts are simply not going to fit. They're not the same size, and the pins are different. Oh, sorry, that's not centered. So all you need is a simple converter. Uh, the only issue is 
some games, you won't get the expanded audio from it, but there's only a few games that are like that, like uh, Castlevania 3, but I'm pretty sure you could still play it, you just won't get the full uh, soundtrack going. Hmm, tired. Anyway, well, uh, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. Um, where's OBS? Where's my outro screen? Yep. Well, uh, thanks for watching. Um, YouTube folks, like, comment, subscribe. And I'll catch you all next week because I won't stream anymore this week. And next week, hopefully, is a normal week where you can stream more nights instead, instead of just one. Maybe it works with PAL games or something. I know they definitely took something out that was in the original model. Huh. Maybe. Something worth looking into. Anyway, well, thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. And I'll catch you all later. See ya.